session of this uh, Kochi Life 2010 festival, and uh, you might call it the grand finale. Uh, we have Slavoj Zizek, I hope I've pronounced the name right, uh, here, who will be delivering the keynote and the valedictory, as it were, of this, of this seminar or this uh, festival. Uh, but before we launch into that, We'll, have, we'll just spend a few minutes on some, uh, on a ritual. There's a book release and a presentation of a, mem uh, of a memento. Uh, the, in, 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 very quickly, in fact, the Kochi Life team has brought together three essays uh, of Zizek, uh, on Zizek by Sanil V, T. V. Madhu, and T. T. Shrikumar. This was done uh, very quickly, but I'm sure very efficiently. And we, are, we will be presenting this, uh, this, what looks more like a pamphlet than a book, to, to, to Zizek. And uh, to, do the, to do the honors, may I request Javid Alam to, to kindly come up and present this uh, book to, to Zizek. There we are. Does it look like it? There's just one other uh, small ritual. Uh, we, there's a memento which has been prepared to be presented to uh, Shlavo Zizek, and this is a, what you saw here, this is a, the actual artwork of this, done by Basant Paringod, and I request Rekha Raj to, to kindly come up and present that to Zizek. This is something we hope you will carry home and remember Kochi life with. And that's a poster which we asked all of you to sign, so he's carrying back a poster of Kochi Life with the signatures of all of us who have signed, signed on that. Good, and so we are now, uh, we'll, we'll, without further ado, we'll uh, uh, move into the actual uh, talk. By Before that, of course, Anand will, uh, will formally introduce Zizek. And uh, after his presentation, of course, we'll throw it open to questions. And... Um, I, I would request you to keep your questions, comments as succinct as possible in, in order to enable greater participation. And uh, time management of the, is of the utmost essence in this final program. So you will forgive me if there is a uh, dictatorship of the proletariat or the state or whatever you want to call it <laughs> functioning at, at, at that point of time. Uh, thank you. Anand. Thank you. I mean, as a publisher of Zizek, I'm really proud that, uh, thanks to Dilip Raj, primarily, we managed to finish this tour of India in Kerala, where probably he doesn't need much of an introduction. I mean, at a time when he's being handed uh, a little book produced in 48 hours, where three people have written articles which have, been, which have appeared in the last couple of days, probably an introduction as such would be, would be redundant. Uh, but still, for those of you who may be uh, familiar, I would still just give you a formal brief introduction. He's a professor at the Institute of Sociology in Ljubljana and at the European Graduate School. He also teaches at the Birkbeck Institute of Humanities in London. He has written more than 40 books with, and topics range from philosophy and Freudian and Lacanian psychoanalysis to theology, film, opera, and radical politics. There's, in fact, a journal uh, devoted to Zizek. It's called the International Journal of Zizek Studies. And uh, Slavoj, I discovered recently there's a South Asia editor to it. It's called, he's called Kishore Buddha. 
And uh, I mean, it might appear to a lot of people, I mean, why is there a journal devoted to a guy who is very much alive and kicking? Uh, this could be discomforting to a lot of people. It was started in 2007. That death should be a prerequisite for sustained scholarly interrogation of a patently substan substantial body of work, however, is perhaps stranger still. In an interview with one of the many journalists interested in packaging Zizek for mass consumption, Tony Brown of the editorial board of the International Journal of Zizek Studies has pointed out that, I quote, Zizek is alive, which allows him to answer back. Derrida once claimed that people treated him as though he were dead before he actually died, since they were too ready to sum up the import of his work. Zizek always resists such encapsulations of his work and forces us, forces us to carry on thinking. He readily challenges people trying to sum him up. Hence his presence on the board of the journal, and he's very much there on the board of his own, I mean a journal, it's not his own journal, a journal uh, which studies his work. He's very much there on this journal and the, the, the board says that it's a challenge to have him on the journal. It's a very unsettling thing and in a positive way. Anyone who tried to pin him down would be beating him up, intellectually speaking. Since Zizek is very alive, he's able to kick back, interrupt encapsulations, celebrations, as well as criticisms. He'll soon kick me back right now, as you'll see, he'll come back and have a comeback point on that, I'm sure. And why, I mean, Navayana being a publishing house which primarily focuses on caste, there's a question asked of us, why are we doing political theory and philosophy? It was in 2005 that we started this list called Other Headings, which looks at issues of theory and philosophy, Primarily because my friend Ravi Kumar insisted that to understand caste, come on, we need Marx, we need uh, Ambedkar, we need Pule, but we also need Foucault and Derrida. Derrida who writes a book called On Touching. For Ravi Kumar in 2007 when the book came out, he said, I really need a copy of this book. So people who try to straight jacket Dalits as who are writing about oppression and human rights violations and their own autobiographical narratives, there is been a serious attempt to refashion this and Navayana's other heading series has been started with that in mind. Unfortunately, in India for the self-appointed intellectual class, a Bordieu, Zizek or a Rancia count, but not Ambedkar. Academics in India are quick to invoke a Bordieu on social, cultural, capital, and we, we, they do not, we do not find them saying that Ambedkar was saying something similar in the 1930s. Strangely and unfortunately, it's been easier to get Zizek to engage with Ambedkar than to get the Indian academic who admires Zizek to read Ambedkar. So for me, the fact that Navayana is presenting and representing Zizek is not an anomaly at all, but part of a process and a part of a broadening of the sphere of public debate on the question of caste and how it links up to other broader issues. And I would like to thank Dilip Raj who persistently, he came to know, he got wind of the fact that I was communicating with Zizek and there was a trip going to happen here. And he said, whatever it is, you've got to get him to Kerala. We are going to translate three of his books. There was even an attempt to bring it out before he came here, which was of course quite, quite of a, 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 a task of a very tall order, but it's soon going to come out, three books, including Sublime Object of Ideology in Malayalam. I don't think he's been translated into any Indian language yet. So it's quite apt that he should be speaking here at the valedictory of this two-day session, which we've all enjoyed. So over to Slavoj. Thank you. Uh, I hope this works. Thank you very much. First, let me tell you that I am really proud to be here, and I hope it's the first time, but not the last time. I hope that I will be in the next years like that. You know, you must have some annoying old uncle, relative who visits you, then you throw him out, then you throw him out through the door, through the window, he comes back again or what, no? I simply like it here. Second thing, I hope you will not be disappointed because usually I'm associated with telling dirty jokes and so on and examples from cinema. But I told myself, why shouldn't I do for a difference something, well, different? Very naively to try to ask, answer the question, whither left? That is to say, where are a kind of a general balance, which of course is more 
focused on the part of the world where I come from, but this precisely is why I would more than like to, to hear your reaction, where I got it wrong and so on. I'm sure there will be some disagreements. Okay, uh, let me begin with a brief reference to Lenin, the one of October Revolution. When in 1922, after the Bolsheviks won the civil war, they had to retreat into the so-called new economic politics of allowing much more market economy and so on, Lenin wrote a wonderful short text with the title On Ascending a High Mountain. 